Hello, everyone, and welcome to Smart Karma Corporate Webinars. I am Viti Bhatt from the Corporate Solutions team at Smart Karma. We are very happy to have with us Geo Energy Resources today. We will be hearing from Geo Energy's CEO and Executive Director, Kum Hon Tung. Uh, with him in the background is the CFO, uh, Adam Tan. We will start this webinar with Kum Hon walking us through a company presentation after which he will engage in a fireside chat with Smart Karma Insight provider, Nicholas Van Brokhoven. We will be taking Q&As from our audience today. So I would like to request our attendees to post their questions in the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. During this webinar, I will also share links on how you can connect with the company and how you can connect with Nick. So please keep a lookout for messages in your chat box. Uh, without much ado, I will hand it over to Kumhon to start with the presentation. Over to you, Mr. Mr. Tang. Thanks, Vidi. Really. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. I'm not sure where you're dialing me from. Some of you may be uh, coming from a different time zone. Uh, it's in the late afternoon here in Singapore. Uh, my presentation is a short presentation. I just want to run through what happens in 2021 and then a you know, business update of the company uh, this coming year. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the first slide, uh, we're talking about the supply disruption in the coal that's caused an increase. Uh, go to the, the, the front slide. Increase in coal price to record high. I guess most of you know about it. Uh, because of the Russian war uh, in Ukraine. Then uh, the business update is uh, Geo Energy is expected to do well in 2022. On the slide that you see on the screen, Geo Energy has done very well in uh, 2020 and 2021. 2020, 2020, last year, our net earnings uh, was US 90 million, mainly coming from our uh, US dollar bond buyback that we uh, instituted in 2000, late 2019 in December. And we bought most of our bond back in uh, 2020. And we recorded a 19 million or close to 100 million US dollar gain on the share, on the bond buyback. It's a capital restructuring that we have instituted uh, in that year. Uh, it's not that uh, we went to the market to actively buy back the bond. We've been approached by a lot of investors that come to us uh, because of the COVID-19 that affected a lot of businesses and uh, some of the investors in the bond, in, in, the, in the funds, uh, approached us to see whether we want to buy back some of the bond because they are raising certain funding to, uh, to raise liquidity in some of the withdrawals that they face in their fund. Some of the most big funds that are, are invested in our US dollar bond uh, include Fidelity, uh, East Spring, which is part of the venture, and many others as well. Yeah. Our bond was uh, issued in 2017. Uh, it was due in, in this year, October 2022. Uh, last year in October, we did early redemption of the bond. And uh, now uh, we have Geo Energy is practically debt free. In 2021, uh, we achieved a record revenue of 641.9 million uh, rem uh, sales. Uh, we did there's an increase of 109% compared to 2020. Uh, this is mainly driven by the higher sales volume and the average selling price. Of course, coal price was high in the second half of 2021. The average coal price for, uh, for the whole year, 2021, it was $65.85. Today, the coal price uh, currently is $90, $96 per ton. There's a $30 over dollars increase. There's almost a 50% increase in the coal price. This is the Indonesian coal index price. We sell based on the Indonesian coal index price uh, for export. We sell domestically uh, based on the uh, regulated uh, Indonesian uh, government coal price. So the, the group achieved the highest coal sales in a year since it's uh, listing on the Singapore Stock Exchange. We did 11.4 million tons of coal. And this year we have a, a coal production quota approved by the Indonesian government to do 12 million tons. In 2020, we did 10.7 million tons. 
So this year, if we do 12 million tons production and, and, and sales, it will be another record production and sale for the group in 2022. Cash probably came in at an average of $25 per ton compared to $6.25. Fiscal price in uh, year 2020 was low. Uh, the coal price went up in the second half of 2021, as I, as I mentioned earlier. And in fact, coal price was quite high in the second half of uh, last year. It's only for a short period of time, it went up to $150 per ton. Uh, later on, I'll talk to you about the uh, business update on what we expect from in the year 2020 uh, based on the M42 SGX index future price. Uh, it was expected to go to 140 US dollar in the next few months. So the uh, cash profit was, you talk, compare $25 to $6, is, is almost uh, uh, four times increase in our cash profit. Cash profit means it's our EBITDA, our cash generating business. Uh, we go ahead. If you are following uh, Geo Energy in the past, uh, we do not have CapEx. Uh, we have minimum CapEx because uh, our operation, our business model is that uh, we outsource our mining operations to uh, local Indonesian uh, coal mining company. One, I think the second largest uh, coal mining company in Indonesia, Buma. So, of course, uh, in the year 2019 and 20, we experienced this. Uh, in 2019, we have a loss. So we experienced that uh, we have to link our cost structure to the coal price so that uh, at any price, uh, Geo Energy will have a margin. Our break even cost is uh, about US dollar 20 to 22 dollars per ton. Today, coal price 90 something, right? If it goes above, I think this Friday, it may go above 100 dollars per ton. This is in resonance to the current uh, uh, increase in uh, the, the cost of the commodities in the energy market, right? The, the crude has gone to close to $140 per barrel. A few years ago, it was only $60 per barrel. Uh, seven years ago, uh, uh, crude was about US $100 per barrel, okay? So that's why you see the spike in the uh, various companies in, in the energy sector, the, the share price has gone up uh, quite a bit. The fourth quarter cash profit, uh, you look at point number three, is $40 per ton. If we do 12 million tons a year, if our cash profit is maintained, uh, you just take 12 times 40, we're talking about close to half a billion US dollar in cash generation for this year. Uh, later on, I'll go through a chart with you and you can see uh, what is the, our expectation on the coal price going forward in the next 10 months. We are now in early March. In 2021, our EBITDA was 270 million US dollars. It's, well, it's a record for the company, for the group, uh, uh, since it's listing on the Singapore Stock Exchange. This in comparison to 2020, our uh, cash our free cash flow or EBITDA is 57 million only. Our EBITDA is roughly equivalent to our free cash flow. By I said earlier, we don't have capex. Uh, our business model is uh, very efficient in the sense that uh, we can ramp up our production and we can reduce our production because uh, we're working very with very big mining contractors. If we were to mine ourselves, then we have to need time to get equipment ordered. And by the time we arrive, you may not be able to write the whole price. So we are uh, quite our business model is quite responsive to the changing uh, co uh, commodity prices. We have to do that because we are in the commodity sector. If not, then the, by the time we, we, we have all the uh, capex in, in, in place, uh, coal price will have been changed in the next six months. So you look at our improved margin is 40%. Uh, net profit for the year 2021 was the highest since this uh, listing or the incorporation of the group of the company at 179 million. In fact, slightly higher uh, because we have uh, uh, some, made some uh, fair value adjustment to some of our uh, some smaller uh, receivables. Like I said earlier, we had done an early redemption of our outs or the remaining outstanding bond. Uh, we pay a premium of 2% to redeem all our bond, and we save 4.8 million US dollars uh, in annual interest costs. If you look at our financial results and announcement, 
they, there's a 14 million reduction in our financing costs because we have restructured our capital uh, structure. Uh, now we are definitely debt free. That means it gives the, the group a chance uh, or ability to leverage uh, on acquisitions that we are looking at. Of course, any acquisition we do will be not review. Uh, any acquisition we do will be operating assets that will be able to generate some cash flow so that we can leverage and, uh, on the debt market. So the group also recognize, uh, recommended a final dividend of five cents. We paid the first interim dividend uh, on the first quarter results as half a cent, second interim at a half a cent. And then on the third quarter results uh, announcement that we paid uh, three cents and the fourth quarter the whole year, the final dividend, which is to be approved by the shareholders uh, this coming April, uh, five cents. You take the total nine, nine cents dividend uh, divided by the current share price, uh, our dividend yield is 16%. Okay, we pay up 90 or 93 million US dollar cash dividend. Uh, part of it is to be paid in May uh, for 2021. And we also redeem our our bonds, US dollar bonds, which I said earlier. Uh, if we have not done the pay back the dividend, we haven't paid the dividend uh, or redeem our bond, our cash position should be at least US 300 million. I said uh, this 31st December, our cash position was 191 million US dollar. We have a dividend policy that we pay not less than 30%. If we work out the, the dividend payout, what we are paying is we are paying uh, more than about close to 52% payout ratio on our earnings back to shareholders. Okay. Uh, if you invested in our company 52 weeks ago, uh, your return will be a record 243%. I'm sure uh, uh, most of you, you have invested it, uh, in our shares, uh, you will have a very handsome uh, payback from that investment. Uh, because our share price has gone from 16 cents to today, 55, 56 cents. This morning, the share price was trading at, uh, at four, uh, I think for a short period of time at 58 or 59 cents per, per share. The next slide. Then I want to tell you about what, is, what do you expect from the, from the company? Uh, we are in the energy sector. Uh, we are in the coal industry. Uh, of course, the recent uh, uh, initiatives about uh, the carbon outlook and uh, uh, carbon footprint and then carbon neutrality that is announced by various governments uh, worldwide, right? So I always say that uh, in many of uh, my briefings to analysts and investors, uh, do not blame the, the use of coal uh, in energy uh, generation because uh, coal remains as one of the cheapest source of energy is around the world. Uh, it will be, the I think, the single largest uh, uh, source of energy for the next 10 to 15 years, according to the International Energy Agency report. Of course, the use of coal will drop down to 40%. It used to be high, to down to 40%. Uh, whether renewable can substitute for coal is yet to be seen, right? Because nowadays, uh, a lot of these renewable energies, they are going in the face of technology changes. Uh, if we have invested in uh, some of these technology, uh, these renewable uh, energy companies, uh, they may face technology obsolescence because, like you say, you know, nowadays the, the fan is no longer a blade form, right? It, this is like Dyson is a very different thing. Uh, solar panels uh, are not as efficient right? because don't think the solar panel is very uh, environment friendly because it's like your car means free. You don't wash it, you, you, it, you accumulate dust and dirt, and then nowadays the efficiency will drop. Of course, we need to move into a, a situation where. Uh, we need to be environment friendly. So what, what is, uh, how are we going to deal with uh, on the coal on the coal side and how we deal with uh, the migration of using coal into the inner, the most efficient and clean way. We don't uh, blame the coal because it's naturally formed in, in, on the earth crust uh, through millions of years of uh, compression on the seabed. And that's why uh, today you see a, a that we can mine coal, right? So anyway, there is uh, the investments that must go in is actually to the technology of the power plant, how they do carbon capture, how they uh, use the coal responsibility so that uh, it will not emit or pollute the environment or, or, or affect the earth ozone zone. Okay. 
Okay. There are many technologies that are coming in. Uh, I read an article about, I think it's in Iceland, I'm not sure, where they pump the carbon dioxide that is generated from the uh, burning of coal into deep underground and they freeze it. So the, uh, in China, India remains one of the major uh, uh, markets for coal consumption in the world. The, the, according to IEA report, it's two thirds of the world consumption. These are developing countries with great economies, right? So uh, how they use or what is their economic development in the next few years is very important uh, for us in the coal mining sector. Of course, you look at China, China has, uh, in terms of renewable energy, it has the, uh, the use of renewable energy in the percentage of its total energy uh, uh, generation is about 20 over percent. You look at uh, a lot of these uh, reports that are coming up that China has built huge uh, solar farms. By comparison, the US, uh, in all its initiative, uh, is lagging behind China in terms of renewable energy. So coal demand uh, will reach an all-time high in 2022 and continue in 2024. This is based on the IEA report. So what is driving that, that, that demand in the next two to three years? Yeah. Of course, coal consumption will, will come down in, in a, maybe in 10 years time or whatever, because China announced a carbon neutrality in, well, in I think the target year 2020, 2060, Japan, I think 2050, various economies are targeting those. It doesn't mean that it's carbon zero, it's carbon neutrality. That means uh, how they, how they, uh, how they uh, balance the emission of carbon. I never subscribe to this uh, carbon trading, carbon credit, whatever it is. When you pollute your environment, you can use your money to buy a carbon credit and say that I can balance it. You buy from like, Indonesia, uh, our coal coming from Indonesia. It's a great country with huge with, uh, forest uh, reserve. It's like your Amazon, right? So you, if you go and buy the carbon credit and try to balance it, uh, uh, and what you do in your mission, uh, I think it's not right. But there is a lot of uh, uh, promotion about the carbon credit trading. In fact, Singapore is setting up an exchange to trade carbon uh, credit. So Indonesia uh, minus, because Indonesian coal is relatively uh, low sulfur and low ash. That's why it's in great demand and China buys it for blending. Uh, blending with their uh, production of coal. China is a, one of the world uh, producers, uh, big producers of coal, same as the US, Russia, right? And uh, some, some of the, uh, like in uh, Colombia, you have coal coming out from Colombia, South Africa. So uh, because of the shortage uh, of coal, uh, that's why the Indonesian coal is pretty much. Uh, next slide. So this slide, which I am going to show you, is very interesting. You look at the, the graph. Uh, the first two months is actual because we are now in early March. Then you see the dotted line. This is the M42 SGX future trade price. What the market perceive, and these are future traders in, in on the M42 means it stands for 4,200 CPCO. This is the type of code that we are selling in the market. You look at the spike that is coming in in May, April, May, and then you come down uh, to December. Even at the lowest in December, the, the futures trading is still higher than it's around the, or higher than the actual that we achieved in the first two months. That's why uh, I think that's the because I did a briefing yesterday. Uh, we say that we expect to, our revenue for the first half of this year to hit 400 million US dollar. Last year, we did the whole year, we did a 600 over million US dollar, right? So uh, that means if based on this projection uh, uh, on the futures trading and based on the broker's uh, consensus and the market uh, offer and bid, Geo Energy is expected to do better in terms of revenue and EBITDA compared to 2021. 2021 is a record year. So, uh, can your energy better than the record year and achieve another record in this year? I talked about, uh, just now earlier, I mentioned about the Russian invasion of Ukraine. This impacted the supply of coal because China, uh, Russia produces quite a, quite, a, quite a bit of coal. We 
beside uh, gas and uh, crude oil, right? Uh, most of their coal, some of these coals are sold to China. So now because of the, uh, the sanctions that are imposed on Russia, uh, China is slowly not buying coal from Russia. Okay. So because it's not buying coal from Russia, and also China do not buy coal from Australia, because of its dispute with US and, and Australia is a close ally of US. So where do China buy its coal from the nearest market, the nearest supplier, the nearest source of uh, coal supply, of course, coming from Indonesia. Uh, coal, uh, US have a lot of coal. We cannot buy US coal. Uh, you can if you buy coal from Colombia or Africa. Uh, it's a very uh, long logistic uh, uh, cost that is uh, that will affect the, the yeah. Their coal prices. Right? So the M42, you look at it, it actually is uh, the next 10 months, it ranges from $71 to $140. Today, uh, last week was $96 already. Okay. So, in fact, last week, coal price jumped by 21%. It's a six, almost a $16 increase in the price. We not we because earlier I mentioned that we do 12 million tons a year, uh, roughly around 1 million tons of production and sales that we do in each month. Just by the coal price, because we sell our coal to uh, one of the major international commodity traders, Trotigura, and Macquarie Bank. Macquarie Bank is our shareholder. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, we were, we were, uh, because Macquarie, uh, for them to invest in us, uh, obviously later on, you can ask me about ESG, whatever it is. We have gone through a very uh, stringent and thorough ESG uh, evaluation by the bank. Why would an one of the major Australian bank invest in a coal mining company? Of course, it's a very small investment by them, but uh, it must meet their ESG criteria and uh, KYC. Okay, next slide. So what do we expect in 2022? In the first two months, we delivered 1.4 million. We should have delivered 2 million because of the Indonesian export ban that is imposed uh, on all the miners uh, in Indonesia. Because of the high coal prices, uh, a lot of the, the miners are not selling to the domestic market because in Indonesia, the domestic market is, uh, the government has arbitrarily fixed a price for supply of coal to the Indonesian government utility company, which is PLN, the Indonesian power company. So they fix it at a, at a, at a uh, HPA price, which is roughly equivalent to the Newcastle, the Australian Newcastle price. Uh, they fix it at $70. For, that is for 6,332 caloric value coal. Our coal is 4,200 uh, caloric value coal. So you, you, you work it up, our average selling price, if you sell to the local government, uh, utility board, PLN, we're selling only at $38, when the coal price is $96 today. Because of the, uh, the we have a DMO, this is called domestic sales, DMO of 25% of production, we must sell to the local market, but you didn't actually specify when you need to sell. So most of the miners will sell to the Indonesian government when the coal price is lower and they take advantage of the high coal price and they export. So because of that, uh, the Indonesian government, uh, certainly the power company find that their inventory uh, comes down and nobody's selling the coal to, to them. So that's why they impose a ban on the export uh, of uh, all the miners. Ours is lifted within 22 days uh, together with all the companies. Some companies are lifted later. Ours is the one of the first mining company to be uh, lifted on the export ban because we have always met our DMO. So uh, because of the, the export ban, uh, that's why we deliver less coal in the first two months. And our average selling price also lower, slightly lower because we sell to domestic market because as I already explained to you. So we have done most of our domestic market obligation for the uh, few months. So the next few months we will be more doing more export than domestic obligation. So based on the current coal price, uh, our cash profit is above forty dollars. So we target for the next six months, five to six months, for the first uh, 
next three months or so, uh, for the uh, four, next four months for the first half of 2022, uh, production target of five to six million tons because we have a production target of 12 million tons for one whole year. So because of that, you can work out, it's very simple mathematic calculation, right? If your cash profit is $40, per say, uh, you do five, six million tons, you do five times 40, you, you get 200 million of EBITDA or free cash flow. Your revenue, you know the first, first uh, two months revenue, you can use the, the code price and calculate based on the volume and you get a 400 million target for first half of 2022. Okay, I think that's um, a good uh, good summary. I think we've been a bit kind of a bit over time in terms of um, you know the, the general presentation. Um, so I think from here on, you know, we best if we if we look at some of the Q and A coming from the audience and some of the questions I had prepared. So uh, I, I've been following the company for a number of years. I first wrote about it on Smart Karma in 2018, and then a number of times 2019. And the situation was very very different at some points at this. You know, juncture the company was uh, the coal price was trade. You know, was was way below the cost of production, and so the share price suffered uh, quite a bit. And that's also what was the bonds were in distress in distress because people thought that the company might have issues going forward. Obviously, the current coal price has changed everything. So that is a um, that's a it's not really point. correct, uh, 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 Nick. Because uh, like earlier explained. Uh, we, in the earlier years, our, co our production cost is not linked to coal price. So now, if the production cost is linked to coal price, if the coal price comes down, our margin is protected. So like I said, that our break even is $22, $20. So if coal price comes to $30, coal price is never down, down to below $30 for a long, long time, for a number of years. So if it's at $30, if our, our break even cost is $22, we, can, we have a margin of $6. So we won't go back to the situation where we have in 2020, 2019, because we have taken a proactive action to link our production costs to coal price. Yeah. Yes, but but I, I was giving some background in terms of yeah. why the situation has changed dramatically for the company. And mm -hmm. uh, and so basically one of the things that attracted me to the company, which is on the board, you have Jim Rogers, which is a very well-known uh, commodity investor, you know, made his fortune with George Soros as well. So I thought that was interesting. There was an Indonesian coal miner listed on SGX with Jim Rogers on the board. So that's a bit of a, a precursor. Uh, if, if you look at the, um, so obviously everything with a commodity player comes down to pricing. Um, and so if I looked at CME now here, you know, April contracts at 145, May contracts at 140, June 135. So, but how does the, can you just remind us, are you like selling forward some of your production? Are you hedging some of this pricing, which is now obviously very good for you? Or is it all spot? And how does the spot get calculated? Is it a monthly average? Is it a weekly average? How uh, can investors track your, the pricing? I mean, because uh, obviously it changes every day, but how, how do you lock in that pricing? on the international portion? Because of course, we, you have explained that some of it is on the local market, but how do you lock in the international pricing? Can you walk us through the mechanics of the how it works? Interesting question. Uh, all our spot coal are pre-sold to Tropical Ra and Macquarie. Uh, of course, I can tell you the, how, how normally how it works. Of course, uh, there, there's a uh, factor how uh, Macquarie, uh, uh, sellers uh, look look at their pricing with us and then compare it with them, right? I won't mention which which company, which uh, uh, commodity trader. We only have two commodity uh, commodity trader, and our export is only sold to two customers. Uh, so we don't have credit risk because we're taking the credit risk of Macquarie Bank and Tropicura. Our our uh, pricing is based on the average for the month, mainly based on the average for the month or a lagging two weeks price. So today, for example, today, right? Today, the coal price is 90 something dollars. If coal price goes up to hundred over dollars uh, in March, what we sell today uh, is not at the spot price. It could be higher than the spot price because the average for the month could be higher because we are, coal price is, uh, it comes up every week at the ICI index, the Indonesian coal index. We sell based on the Indonesian coal index uh, uh, for, for the 4,200 CV code. Indonesian code index have a five index, uh, 
for different different calorie value of the coal. Ours is the ICF coal. So yeah. if the coal price goes up, uh, we will sell an average. So uh, if we are selling a lagging price, uh, two, two, let's say the two weeks lagging price in a falling market, we are protected from the downside. Of course, we will cash up uh, on the price later on uh, because we are selling a uh, 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 two weeks price earlier. So these are pricing. Uh, okay. So and then in terms of, um, you said during the first few months, so it was, it was close to half of your production was for the Indonesian, for the local market. And now in the, the next few months, it will be less, right? Because you, you only have to meet the criteria of the percentage for the local market over an entire year, correct? Yes, yes. So they, that's they okay. the, the 25% based on the, on the whole year. Uh, so yes. You, yeah. So, so you, you will basically, more because more you've done year, more in the beginning, you've done more in the first two months, that means that now with prices are actually higher, you will have more of a benefit to the company uh, because you're selling international. So it's a, it's a blessing in disguise if you look at it yes. this way. We, we stopped from exporting. Now the coal price has gone up by, for example, just last week, it gone up by 20, uh, uh, $16. If we have sold the coal, uh, exported the coal in January, February, we, will have, we have less than $16, $16 per ton. Okay, all right. And and how does the, how does the, um, so now I think yesterday there was another call with the company and you, you mentioned something about Thailand. So Thailand was in a position where they were getting a lot of their coal from Russia. Oh, Thailand, Is that correct? It's China. It's China. Oh, okay. You thought to me, I thought you were mentioned Thailand. Okay. Yeah, uh, no. And so how are you seeing how, or because basically you, you don't deal with, you only deal with the two houses that are basically off takers of your coal. So you, you don't have any say where the coal is shipped to, right? Uh, we know where the coal is shipped to. Uh, obviously, most of the buyers uh, will want to be, want to deal with the miners directly, right? Okay. Uh, so, uh, why we use uh, the big commodity traders? Uh, they have uh, the reach uh, to uh, many big uh, companies. Most of them are power plant, right? So, for us to sell our coal, in fact, we have a lot of inquiries to supply coal directly to the buyers, but we, we won't we won't be able to supply coal because we have pre, pre sold all our coal. So yeah. uh, our coal is mainly to the southern part of China, uh, mainly all the power plants in the southern part of China and in ASEAN. Our coal is also sold in Japan and Korea. So this is the market that uh, there's a, this, uh, uh, this ASEAN and the China and Indian market is the greatest market uh, for coal in the world. And okay. we are near to the market because Indonesia is very proximity to this country. Okay. Uh, we're talking about European uh, buyers, whatever, because nowadays uh, the demand and usage of coal is different. And how, how is the um, now? You know, you, with oil price going up and general inflation in many different parts of the world is 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 reaching um, you know highs we haven't seen in, in, in a number of years. Um, so how is cost inflation uh, impacting you or you know the the contractors you deal with? How are you managing that? Of course, uh, if you are economists, you look at it, you know, the coal price, whatever is kind of go up and up and up, same as uh, the crude price. Uh, inflation will go up. That's why uh, some of these uh, countries are trying to manage inflation because your cost. You see, uh, in, in Singapore, already the, the, the government is talking about increasing the tariff of the electricity bill that comes in, in that bills to the consumer uh, because gas price has gone up very high. So. As if you look at it, uh, what is the differential between the uh, crude and coal? Because they are both sources of energy, right? So most of the power plants uh, in, in this part of the world, they are coal fire power plants. Of course, they are gas fire power plants. Uh, uh, in China, they have big hydro, whatever it is. It depends on the seasonal uh, fluctuation. So uh, given that, uh, Crude is also high. So you know, there is a power plant. Can, if you have a coal-fired power plant, you cannot say I switch the uh, the input uh, uh, source of uh, your input cost, uh, your input material from from gas to, to to coal. Some of them are built to use coal and gas. So we see that uh, the market is still buoyant in the next few months. That's why you see the the M forty two. All you just now, uh, Nick, you mentioned about the CME. The other index that is trading on the four two. Uh, GAF, also CV Co is a CME index, huh? the Chicago yeah. Exchange. Okay, uh, so that one, uh, so that's why the price will go up, and then that's why uh, in future, in the next second half of the year, the price will come down.
Okay, uh, I'll go to some questions from the audience. There's a question here from uh, Kevin Coe. He asks, is geoenergy affected by Singapore's carbon tax? We are not, a, we are, you see, uh, carbon tax, uh, what they do is uh, they leverage on, I'm not very sure about the, uh, how they leverage the carbon tax. Uh, uh, we are an Indonesian company. Our mines are in Indonesia. We are not in Singapore. Uh, so we are just listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange. I don't think they will affect us in, in, in that sense. Uh, of course, Indonesia has its own carbon tax uh, in, uh, regulations. Uh, so far, the, uh, the carbon tax, because nowadays, it depends on the demand supply, right? We, we, now we pay the royalty that we're paying to the Indonesian government uh, at the 5%. Uh, any increase in the, all this uh, cost will be passed back to the, the consumer, the, the buyer. Yeah, okay. Then what are your, you know, this is a different question from James Chin. What are your capital allocation priorities? Uh, will you remain a pure play coal operator? This, this also ties into a question that I had is basically in the last uh, release of the company, um, you know, for the full 2021, 2021 results, the chairman, said that the in the in the press release that the company is looking for m a opportunities in renewables downstream logistics and transshipments so any color you can give uh, to answer that question okay uh we are a coal mining company uh, obviously we need to look at the sustainability of our business what is still going to be in the next uh, five to ten years or 15 years obviously we need to innovate we need to change right uh uh, any investment that we are looking at, uh, most likely will not be in the coal sector. Uh, uh, our mines, our two mines that we are producing now, have a life of mine until 27, I think 2027, 2028. Uh, if the demand of coal remains as, as uh, it is, we should mine out these two mines in 2027, 2028. So we are looking at uh, uh, diversification on our business uh, is related to mining. So what type of mining we're looking at? Of course, uh, coal mining remains one of the most easiest uh, uh, startup business to, to look at because it doesn't require any value added uh, processing that you do. If you do any mining, you're looking at nickel or, or other, other minerals, uh, you need to smelt, you need to uh, build the capex requirements is high, okay? So, uh, we are looking at maybe downstream uh, in, the, in the renewable side. Indonesia is building its new capital uh, in uh, East Kalimantan. It's called Nusatara, it's not Jakarta. Uh, so we, we are looking at uh, how we can have uh, this new capital will be uh, uh, using renewable energy as a soft energy. So how do we look at the supply chain? Uh, we have a mine, BEK, in East Kalimantan, right? So in terms of the supply chain, uh, what are renewables you're looking at it? Okay, EV or cars, whatever it is. So what are the materials used or required for, for some of these uh, productions? We are looking at uh, how do we invest in the supply chain? Uh, of course, we're looking at uh, logistic. Uh, obviously, uh, when you build uh, open mines, whatever you have to have logistics, right? That's why a lot of, a lot of investors, uh, some of some, if, I mean, if you're invested in mining, you should know. Don't be attracted by the huge reserve and all the job report it tells you is fantastic potential, but you know, they, they all remain underground if you cannot move the material to export market because most of, most of, the, most of these minerals are in the deep jungle. Uh, how do you move them out? Uh, so these are things that the side logistic is very important. So there's some, some areas we're looking at. Uh, of course, the uh, current valuation on the assets are great. Maybe we can look at divesting our assets uh, if we can get a good valuation. That's why I said in the last slide on the presentation, which you didn't see just now, is that uh, our market value, uh, our valuation, we did a uh, job valuation on our coal reserve. Uh, it came in about 700, 700 million US dollars. Uh, if you are an investor, you, you, you you sell when it's high and you buy when it's low. Okay. So that's yeah. our culture price reflect that type of valuation. So these are some of the things that we're looking at. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of questions have been asked of us about why uh, we haven't made an investment. If we had made an investment two years ago, we wouldn't have paid back the bond. Today, Geo Energy maybe 
okay, if, uh, uh, the, the investment may not be producing at this moment of time or generating small uh, production, which you cannot capture the current uh, commodity price. So okay. uh, that's the risk. I have another. I have another question here from Kevin Co. Who asks because um, you said you were going to produce about 12 million tons uh, this year. How many? How many tons of that coal will be shipped to China? So from the 12 million, how, how much is going to China? If we look at the, the geographical analysis of our revenue uh, in the uh, financial year 2021, I think it's about close to 70 uh, percent of our coal is is to China. And then okay. the rest of it, India and Japan. I think India, Japan, Korea, and ASEAN. Yeah? Uh, I can't remember. remember. You look at uh, our our uh, results announcement for uh, 2021. There is a geographical spread on it. So the market will be around that. Yeah. OK. Um, could you, and another question follow up this, could you please share the quantity that has been sold under DMO uh, year to date? Earlier, we said that we sold 51% of our total production of 14, 14 million sales. Huh? 1.4. 1.4. Okay. Yeah, so about million sales, but our DMO is 51% of it. Okay. Okay. All right. That's what that's that's clear. Um, then, um... if not for that, our revenue for the first for the two months would be much higher. Yes. And um, but yeah, we, we discussed that. So basically, that you, that's going to be a catch up in the in the next quarter, in the second quarter, and actually at the current prices where coal is trading, if they if they remain that way, that will actually be a, a windfall to the company. So that should be. That should we be look good. at it this way. Actually, Geo Energy has been the, quite good. Uh, you know, how you turn a black swan event from the COVID nineteen that affected a lot of people and affected our bond price, and that Geo Energy has uh, uh, bought back two hundred million US, US dollar of the bond. Uh, by paying 100 million US dollars. Uh, so this, yes. this is how we, how we turn an event into opportunity that we look at our last year annual report, uh, our, our team of the report is how do we turn an a, a, a event that, that uh, create value for the company. Now, because yes. of the, we are not saying that we, we benefited from people's, uh, from certain, certain, certain actions or why people are suffering, why we are doing very well, but because we are in a commodity sector, how do we, uh, manage and uh, run this company uh, uh, to in response to some of these uh, geopolitical uh, events that's happening in the world. Yeah, yeah. and do you? Um, how how should the shareholders shareholders think about you know dividends? Because you have a policy of thirty percent last year. The payout ratio was over fifty. Uh, obviously, you you still have a, you're generating a lot of cash, and you're going to generate a lot of a lot more cash at the current coal price going forward. Um, you know just only in the first half, looking at what you already had on the balance sheet and how much is probably going to be added to it. Um, so how should we think about that? I, we know in the past, you've also been in the market doing some buybacks. Um, you know, how, how, should we, how should investors think about that? How does the board of the company think about it? Yeah, you look at our EV Vita, right? You, maybe later on, the, you receive the presentation. You look at our EV Vita based on the 2021 EV Vita. We are trading at 1.4 times. So in 2022, if our EBITDA is higher, we are trading much less than 1.4 times. If you are private equity, most private equity look at investments like uh, 2.5 to 3 times EBITDA. Right? So we are trading at very low EBITDA because of our high cash generation. Uh, there are various proposals are telling us to buy back our shares, whatever it is. I say the market is not efficient. Uh, the share price has been uh, traded quite well, and there's great volume. So we will support the share price because every day our share price, I say, uh, is you based on the various things that I mentioned. Uh, we are undervalued. Uh, we have a policy of thirty percent, and uh, we pay fifty percent. In fact, a lot of uh, investors were quite surprised that we pay a fifty percent of our net earnings back to shareholders. Right. So uh, of course we had to balance our uh, our cash uh, dividend payment as we announced uh, to based on. Uh, what are the investment uh, we're looking at? Okay, uh, we have the liability to leverage. Of course, we have co-opted repayment that we, we can get from our two major commodity traders, Macquarie Bank and uh, Trafigura. Uh, so, if we look at the, the trend that we have, uh, we're given a three cent 
And then in the third quarter, we give a fourth set. Uh, I leave you to think about what we're going to declare on the first half of this year. Okay. Um, and, and in terms of- I cannot of... tell you this because end of day is, uh, uh, this, this discussion is not uh, available or posted to the SGF next, uh, next later on. Yeah. Yes, understand. Um, that, but basically, in the past, you, you tried to acquire some, uh, some mines, then in the end, the transactions did not materialize. Um, is there opportunities now in the coal space to acquire assets in Indonesia, or is it because of the, the good gold pricing, nobody's willing to sell their, their assets? There are assets for sale in Indonesia. Uh, uh, I think there are currently two assets in the market, which is running a tender sale. Tender sale. I think one of them may have completed that's another one coming on goal. Uh, these are already big assets. Uh, uh, the valuation is not that high, but because it's a very big asset, for example, if it's a 200 million reserve, 300 million reserve, they're selling it. For example, if they sell it, we, we, our, we acquire our uh, assets at $2 per ton, right? If, if the asset is 200 million tons, even if you sell it at 150, you, you're talking about three, 400 million US dollars. Would, okay. would the company put in the three, four hundred million US dollars uh, on an asset that you're going to mine for the next uh, 20 years? What's the future of 20 years? What is the, uh, we have to see. Uh, that's why uh, there are assets that are uh, not that expensive, but they are big assets. So uh, we have to balance the, our cash, uh, how we leverage, what's the risk exposure in all the things. Uh, as I told you last time before, right? We have to innovate, we have to change. We cannot just sitting there and say that we are in the whole business sector. It's, it's a great business that we are in, right? Uh, how do we innovate? That's important. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, there, I think we covered all questions. I think we're coming at the end of our, our a lot of time. So Vidi, I don't know if you have anything else to, to add here. I think it was good. I think we covered a lot of ground uh, in terms of the company as well as the sector. So I think it's a good time to wrap up. Um, before I wrap up, I would like to thank Nick for some very interesting questions, uh, which helped uh, the audience understand uh, about the coal sector as well as uh, geoenergy's approach. I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Tong for taking the time and for elaborating on the company's approach, uh, what's happening in the sector, and you know, uh, what are the opportunity for geoenergy at this time? Uh, besides that, I'm also thankful to our attendees who could join live. We had some very interesting questions coming in from the audience as well. So thank you for that. Uh, with this, we would wrap up today's webinar and we will see you again next week. Thank you. Thank you very thank you much. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you.